Hello, my name's Andy. Welcome to episode 4 of Keeping Water. In this episode, I'm going to outline my plans for the next 12 months and also explain why I'm doing the pipe work test you can see here. I'll start with some background for the more significant plans. The water in my pond is fairly clear most of the time. However, it's far from perfect and has a lot of small suspended detritus as well as larger items of waste matter on the bottom of the pond. There's a number of reasons for this. Firstly, my pond is quite plant heavy. I have a lot of marginal plants with differing growth and dying off cycles that result in a lot of dead or broken plant matter ending up in the pond. There are also quite a lot of plants in the garden and surrounding area. I've spoken a lot in previous episodes about the generosity of the oak tree in autumn, but the varying growth cycles of the other species of trees and plants means there's a regular deposit of flowers, leaves and seeds finding their way into the pond throughout the year. All of this means that plant matter is often a more significant waste problem than the output of the fish. I address this waste with a skimmer net for the smaller items, an old fishing landing net for larger items, and of course the skimmer itself for any surface detritus that is caught before it sinks. Obviously, this isn't completely successful. Many pond keepers combat excess solid waste with a pond vacuum, and until a while ago I did too. That was until someone may have knocked the vacuum into the pond, after which I found out that it wasn't waterproof and it didn't want to work again. Which brings me to plan number one, get a new pond vacuum. Not a very detailed plan and slightly dependent on Father Christmas this one. I'll try to be on the nice list. The second reason that my pond has quite a lot of detritus is due to mechanical filtration. The multibay collects solid waste in three ways. The vortex circulates the water as it enters the system, which allows solid waste to drop and collect at the bottom. The brushes then catch some of the waste that passes through the vortex. The K1, being moving, only acts biologically, so any waste that gets by the brushes is then either collected in the Japanese matting or ends up back in the pond. The skimmer, obviously, also provides mechanical filtration, although only for larger items, as the basket and skimmer has quite large holes, and I have no additional sponges or floss to catch anything finer. With regular cleaning, twice a week for most of the year, weekly or fortnightly during the winter, the multi skimmer do a good job, but there's a couple of gaps. Firstly, the system is pump fed and not fed by a bottom drain. Bottom drains usually do a better job, especially with good circulation in the pond, of collecting sunken detritus. Additionally, using a pump to push water through a system, rather than using one to pull it through, means that waste is often chewed up by the pump, meaning it's harder for the mechanical filtration to collect it, and resulting in a subsequent increase in fine waste. Secondly, as I've said, I don't have any mechanical filtration that is specifically designed to collect the finer waste. Thirdly, although the water quality is good, the fish are hopefully going to get bigger and possibly spawn, so additional biological filtration to provide some future proofing would be beneficial. So, on to plan two, build a backy shower. The plan is to place this in the filter shed and to make a DIY one rather than buy one. The reasons for this are twofold. One, they're really expensive, and two, DIY ones are easy to make and it will be in the shed so looks aren't too important. The plan is to use three plastic storage boxes, which can be bought for as little as £10, stacked and positioned on a raised platform in the shed. 
The water would enter the shower from the skimmer, first flowing through filter floss to catch fine waste, and then over filter media such as Ciparax, which as filter media goes, is pretty cheap. It will then be returned to the pond through the current skimmer return outlet. Showers have a good evidence base for their effectiveness and are definitely one of the cheaper ways to improve the biological filtration of a pond system. With the added filter floss, I will also hopefully improve mechanical too. I have some questions to answer though before I can commit to this. Firstly, it is a cheap option, but not if I have to upgrade the pump the skimmer uses. This is where the messing around with pipes I showed earlier comes in. If placed in the shed, the shower would have a maximum height equal to the height of the shed wall. In reality though, I wouldn't want it quite that high. Plus the spray bar the water came in through would be lower than top of the top box. So, about 10 to 12 inches lower than the shed wall. Anyway, for the test I made the pipe work as tall as the shed wall and after some teething problems I got some flow coming through the horizontal pipe. The flow was obviously much reduced, but it did flow. What needs greater thought and testing is 1. whether the reduced flow will be enough for the shower and 2. whether the reduced flow will overly impair the function of the skimmer. I appreciate any thoughts or advice you may have on this. I also plan to be adding more K1 to the multibay as much as I can over time while still being able to keep it moving. Plan number three is to add aeration to the pond. This is not because I have signs or even suspicions that there's a lack of oxygen in the pond, but again, as fish get bigger and more numerous, the need for dissolved oxygen increases. Therefore, I would like to add a second air pump to the filter shed and an air disc into the pond directly. I have not had any problems with my current pump, a Helia AC09810, so would buy another of the same model. There's benefits in addition to added oxygen. The air disc would also help with water circulation and with keeping the water clear of ice in winter. On to plan number four, regular testing. I do complete tests, usually for ammonia and nitrite, but infrequently and usually in response to problems I've observed. I'd like to test more regularly, probably weekly, to get a picture of any fluctuations in water chemistry throughout the seasons. I'd also like to complete a wider range of tests, for example, ammonia, nitrite, and also nitrate, chlorine, oxygen, and pH. It would also be useful to compare these tests with other data, such as water temperatures and amount and type of feed. Which brings me nicely to plan number five, organised feeding. I will be dedicating a whole episode to my current feeding regime, if you can call it that, but I think taking a more organised approach to feeding will help, both in relation to fish health and growth, but also to water quality. It would be useful to keep a record of the amount of food, both eaten and uneaten, and the type of food given for each week. This could also be cross-referenced to any water quality issues. My final plan, number six, keep making videos. In the short time I've been making these videos, I've also become more organised in other aspects of fish keeping. It's been very useful in enabling me to plan ahead and be focused. Although the fish haven't always appreciated the increase in cameras in and around the pond, keep a more frequent eye on them can only be a good thing for spotting problems sooner. Thanks ever so much for watching this week's episode. Please leave any comments or questions you have in the comment section below. I'll be sure to keep you updated as these plans become more concrete and detail their progress in future videos. In the next episode of Keeping Water, episode 5, I'll be showing the routine cleaning I do every week and try to explain why I do it the way I do. If you'd like to see that and the other videos I have planned, please consider subscribing. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time. Thank you.